my favorite thing to do. Uh, welcome, everyone. Great afternoon. Uh, a little gray, of course, again, but start off with our music. According to my schedule, we have David Robers, who I think <laughs> is David Rogers. <laughs> I'm easy. So today we are delighted and honored to have with us the Adams Elementary Marimba Band. Uh, this is uh, Mindy Sparks is the music teacher. These are all fourth and fifth graders who have given up a month of recess to practice this music. <laughs> and what's more, this is their first ever performance. So they'll be playing marimbas, which are African-influenced instruments. Uh, these particular instruments were made in Republic, Washington, and the music you've been hearing and are about to hear was composed by almost local composer Walt Hampton from the Tri-Cities. Uh, we are grateful for the levy, which made it possible for this performance to happen. Uh, the piece they will be performing now is called Mbira Jam. That was terrific. Thank you all very much. And I hope you're get not only getting music credit, but also gym credit for upper body development. So thanks very much. Wonderful. Uh, for our invocation today, we have none other than Jan Luring. Gosh, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer after that. Cheer one more time. That was awesome. I had tears in my eyes. I can't believe this is... Fourth, fifth, and sixth grade? 
holy mackerel. What were you doing in fourth and fifth grade? I wasn't doing that. Okay, I have to be serious, but it's hard to be serious after that. Bear with me. Okay. Well, uh, we all know that hunger has been a problem in our entire world since time began. In 2020, the state of food insecurity estimated between 720 and 811 million people went hungry every day. And one out of ch 10 children go to bed hungry every night. We all try in our own way to make a difference. But uh, today, we have a speaker who is from Northwest Harvest. It will be a Zoom. But we do have a video, I understand, and a wonderful program about how we can help. Northwest Harvest is the leading hunger relief agency in our state. It builds partnerships and communities across Washington to get food where it's needed most, provides an average of 2 million meals each month through statewide networks of 375 food banks. Northwest Harvest works through meal programs, high school needs, and many others. It provides nutritious, culturally appropriate food to anyone and everyone in need. And I think we'll learn some more today about how we can help. But I would like you to bow with me in prayer. Father, help us to help the hungry. Inspire us to share our abundance with others. And make us mindful of how we can share and what we can do to serve and meet these needs. Amen. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, again, welcome everybody here. It's great to see our tables full again. And um, welcome to all our guests. We have uh, guests from Northwest Harvest, of course, as well as our wonderful musicians and um, others that have come. Uh, we also have our new assistant city manager here who's over there drinking, and I wanted to particularly find a spot to embarrass her when she's drinking coffee. So, uh, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> and now, one of the best parts of all is to uh, introduce a new member. And to do that, we have Deb Sterling. Good afternoon. Tom Galke, he's our newest member. He's the CEO of Entrust Community Services, which is a nonprofit agency, if you don't know, and it specializes in serving people with disabilities, uh, especially those and others dealing with uh, extreme poverty and things of that nature. Uh, Entrust Community Services is really a, a leader in the field of employment for people with disabilities and folks that are experiencing other kinds of barriers. They also work in seven counties in eastern Washington. Tom's got 35 years experience. It doesn't mean he's dull, it just means that he's committed. <laughs> but he's got 35 years experience in the field of rehabilitation. He served on a number of state boards and commissions specifically the Governor's Commission or Committee on Disabilities. He's a board member and past president of two prestigious organizations, Community Employment Alliance and our own Homeless Network of Yakima County. He's also been a longtime Toastmaster and has reached some high levels in, in being a Toastmaster. And if you don't know, if you missed it in our uh, Rotary Magazine, we are actually official partners with Toastmasters. So Tom can tell you all about that if you have questions. He was an Area 3 director for Toastmasters uh, a couple of years ago. And get this, I'm not sure that anybody, including myself, even realized this, but he was the president of the Sunnyside Rotary Noon Club in 2002. So he's not new to Rotary, but he's just coming back after a long hiatus. Tom went to West Valley High School. He graduated from Central Washington University. 
there, there, there's a lot of rivalries here. Also graduated from the University of Phoenix with a master's degree in business administration. Dawn is his life partner and wife for over 30 years. They enjoy hiking and camping, exploring all the wonderful wineries of Washington. So I assured Tom that that would make him in good stead with all Rotarians. He and Don have three boys. They have six grandchildren. And Tom is actually an avid musician, especially in his younger years. He played in bands in Los Angeles. And maybe one other little tidbit, Tom happens to be my boss. <laughs> well, welcome, Tom. There's your red badge, which I think, as you know, from education, you complete some education before you get the famous blue badge. This is your book of all the membership, which is also highly important, a plaque for your wall, and none other than license plate holder. Yeah, great. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. Welcome very much. Thank Glad you. to have you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. We now are um, uh, blessed to have Sonia Lund, who is going to talk a little bit about uh, Asian Pacific Islander and her experience, because she's from the only country, uh, foreign country, that ever let me live there for a while. So here you are, Sonia. Thank you, President ba Ball. Thank you so much, uh, fellow Rotarians. I was honored to be asked to lead the City of Yakima proclamation um, this week, so here it is. Whereas Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month is a month to celebrate and pay tribute to the contributions of Asian Pacific Americans to American history, society, and culture. And whereas uh, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month originated in a congressional bill in June of 1977, whereas on March 28, 1979, President Carter issued Presidential Proclamation 4650 pro proclaiming the week beginning on May 4, 1979 as Asian Pacific American Heritage Week, and whereas on May 21, 2009, President Obama issued Presidential Proclamation 8369, proclaiming May 2009 as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and whereas Asian Americans, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islanders comprise many ethnicities and languages, and their many achievements embody the American experience. Whereas Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander men and women are leaders in all aspects of American life, government and industry, science and medicine, the arts and armed forces, education and sports. Whereas the city of Yakima community has benefited through the cultural richness, diversity, and generosity of its local Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. Now therefore, I, Sunea Lund, Deputy Mayor of the City of Yakima and be behalf on this of the City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2022 as Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Okay, that being done. <laughs> So hello, Anihaseo. Say it back, Anihaseo. That means hello in Korean. So what does it mean for for me to be Korean? Um, you know, I sat with this all week long, thinking, what do I say? Because I could be up here for maybe a year telling you about it. Um, there's just so much in my culture that um, I find so so beautiful. But what I'm really going to talk about are the two mo like foundational parts of my culture. The first being color, and the second being food. So Koreans typically place great value on color and their significance, which may be why I'm a colorist now, I'm not sure. Growing up, I couldn't, find, I couldn't help but notice that all of my friends' houses were these very classy, muted, earth tone pa color palettes. And it was beautiful. In stark difference, my home screamed in blue and yellow and red and white and black, the five basic colors in Korean culture. These five colors symbolize direction and the elements, and they're considered necessary for a healthy and prosperous life. 
Blue signifies east and wood. Red is south and fire. Yellow is center and earth. White is west and metal. And black is north and water. And these five colors are the five cardinal directions and elements of life. And they originated from the ancient Chinese philosophy that maybe you all have heard of it, yin and yang, which basically means everything in life must be balanced. The second great, great significant thing about my culture is, of course, the food. And I think that that's really typical of most cultures. Um, right now, this month, we would all be eating fiddlehead fern fronds. Say that fast. Fiddlehead fern fronds. And when you do that, you're basically asking the gods or the universe to give your growing season, like have a long growing season and a prosperous return. And so we would start every spring eating those in order to give thanks to the earth, basically. Now, you know that if you are trusted and respected, you would be invited to dinner. And it would take five hours, because that's how long it takes. Um, in fact, even to this day, many business deals are completely ruined and um, fall apart completely just because one party chose not to eat with the other. You can't trust somebody you can't eat with, apparently. <laughs> uh, we, we eat a lot, like a lot, a lot. Uh, every meal is a celebration, and we celebrate everything. And we celebrate everything really, really big. So the next time you see a bunch of Asians sitting around or dancing, ribbon dancing, or dragon dancing, or a drum line, you might think that it must be a national holiday. But in fact, it might just be Tuesday. Um, anyway, thank you for allowing me to share a couple things from my culture about what being Korean is. And for me, it's being a part of a culture that is rich with color and traditions and how much family is involved. Um, everybody is your family. Growing up, I thought that I had 17 aunts and 72 cousins. And it's because in my culture, if you sit down and eat, you're my aunt or my cousin. So right now, we all ate together. So now, welcome to the family. <laughs> thank you. Kam se hamida, which means thank you. I'm going to just leave you with one more thing, and I want everybody to put their fingers up like this. And just make a little, like a little V with your thumb and forefinger. And that means from the bottom of my heart. And sarangheo means I love you. So when you say that, you do this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sonia. Uh, I enjoyed my time over there, and I enjoyed the food, all except one little dish, kimchi, <laughs> which is kind of a pickled cabbage in lots of forms. So uh, uh, never did get a taste for that. but. Anyway, thank you very much. Really appreciated those words. Sergeant in Arms is supposed to be Dressa, Mercy, and Tressel Stale. Other Tressa. Other Tressa. Tressa Chocolate. Tressa, 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 well, it says Tressa Staddle on here. And Majir says Tressa Why Stockley. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> it's Tressa Shockley, even better. Oh, thank you, President John. <laughs> Carolyn, are you driving this one? Okay, excellent. So for those of you who just had to see me two weeks ago, I'm so sorry. Hopefully after today, you won't have to see me again for a little while. Um, I am going to bring you some fun today, something different than what we would normally do. And we're going to play a little game called Celebrity Mashup, and I am your host, Tressa Shockley. So the way this game is going to work is I've got... Um, I'm going to show you an image comprised of two different faces. When I call on your table, you'll have to guess the two faces that make up that image. If you guess both celebrities correctly, you will not have to pay your, your money. 
If you get one of the two correct, you will pay a dollar. If you don't get either correct, then shame on you and you better pay two bucks. So locate numbers in the middle of your table. I didn't have enough for everyone, but we've got 12 to get through and I think we've got enough time to do this today. So are we ready to play? Any questions? Okay, let's get started. Table number one, where are you and raise your hand? Excellent, at the back there. Okay, go ahead, yep. Who is this? <laughs> this is a fun one to start with. So you got two, two, you said, you said what? Bingo. You are correct. These are the classic frenemies. Good job. You guys do not have to pay today. Number two, table two, where you at? Raise your hands. Someone's got two. Two is at the other side at the back. Okay, who is this? One is so obvious, but the other one's a little bit more challenging. Doggone it, you guys are good. I'm not gonna make any money today. This is pathetic. <laughs> Table three, where are you? Okay, who is that cute little face? Who does that belong to? Who do you think? <laughs> so finally someone's gonna pay a little money? Okay, pay up your one dollar because Justin Bieber was correct. This is the Bieber deceiver. All right, table four, where are you at? Okay, they are ready. Did you see that excitement? Okay, who is it? Oh, good job, good job. Okay, that's it. I like to call them senior studs. Okay, table five, where are you? One is so obvious, right? Who's that other one? I love it, yes! It was Jan Loring. Okay, you ready? So you've got one guess, there you go. The queen of reinvention is Cher and the queen of pop is Britney Spears. You did, so pay your one dollar, thank you. Next one. Hmm, table six, where are you at? My table, make me proud guys. This is a good mashup. Hmm. I needed to pick different stars, yes. Personally, I think they both look better together combined. Okay, table seven, where are you? Give me your two guesses. Who is it? No, nothing, nothing. Okay, who was? I like, I like your guesses. So the Jack Black is correct. And Jason Bateman. Everyone's seen Ozarks, right? He's fantastic in that. All right, so pay your dollar there. Next up, table eight, where are, where are you? Where are you at? Table eight. Do I have eight out here somewhere? Kevin, yeah, you're eight? Okay. I like your, your style there. Thank you for the dollar or more or, yeah, what do you think? I need your guesses. Bill, Bill Murray and Unknown and Hel Harry, Hen who, what? Harry Hellison. 
okay? They still got it. Table nine, you're up. Table nine is at the back. Who are these two lovely faces? <laughs> okay, Rihanna was correct, and the next person is Katy Perry. Table 10. Table 10. Okay. <laughs> this is a cute pair. Any guesses, Table 10? Who we got? George Dub and Obama, you got it. Table 11, we're closing in on the end of this here. Hmm, who's this? You are table 11, right? You better be. <laughs> okay, you got it right. Last slide, and definitely my favorite slide. Whew. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Table 12, who is this? <laughs> Love it. Where is 12? Okay, you're 12. Yes, Table 12. Hmm, those are nice guesses. It's actually... Okay, so I didn't get a whole lot collected today, so if you just want to participate, throw up your hands with a dollar. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Tressa. Uh, and now, moving on to our speaker which is not Brad Pitt or Ethan Hawke, but the introduction is even better. It's Sonny Cameron. Oh. Good afternoon, President John, Rotarians, and guests. I'm thrilled to introduce our speaker today, Thomas Reynolds, the CEO of Northwest Harvest, as I have the distinguished honor to work for and with Thomas and his team on the construction of the new 200,000 square foot regional distribution center being constructed here in Yakima by our fellow Rotarians and local contractor, Triply Construction. Prior to being selected for this job, I knew little about warehousing and distribution, and I'm now honored to learn and understand the amazing work that Northwest Harvest provides statewide. Northwest Harvest partners with more than 300 food programs throughout Washington State. Northwest Harvest distributes an average of 2 million meals each month to a broad partner network of 375 food banks, meal programs, and high-need schools throughout all 39 counties of Washington. To accomplish this remarkable feat, Northwest Harvest has three distribution centers across the state, Kent, Yakima and Spokane. They will vacate the Kent Distribution Center and relocate their main hub here to Yakima. The existing distribution center here in, uh, in Yakima, we have some staff here today, is about 200, or excuse me, is about 20,000 square feet where many of us Rotarians have volunteered in the past. Serves around 65 hunger relief programs and up to 17 schools in nine central Washington counties to be relocated to this new location. The new regional distribution center will centrally service all 39 counties in Washington state, boasting a 60,000 square foot freezer, 100,000 square foot refrigerated space, and 40,000 square feet of ambient storage. Yakima was selected in part due to our agricultural community being the most fertile region in the state and can now better bolster partnerships with farmers, growers, and processors. Before Thomas speaks today, please enjoy this video produced at the job site recently 
when Northwest Harvest launched their fundraising campaign in April. Substantial completion is scheduled for November 1st, and there will also be uh, a free community grocery market on the same site, um, entering off of Fruitvale. Um, please enjoy the video, and thank you for coming today. I'm Thomas Reynolds. I'm the CEO of Northwest Harvest. Today, we are at the brand new, currently being constructed site of Northwest Harvest Distribution Center right here in Yakima. It's a really exciting time. A lot of trucks, a lot of construction going on. I can't wait until this is open so that we have all this space, all this capacity to help people all across the state of Washington. many people don't realize is in agricultural communities across the state and across the world experience higher rates of food insecurity. And that is true here in the Yakima Valley. We see families who go hungry or have the risk of going hungry, and that's just not acceptable. Northwest Harvest was started in 1967 in response to hunger conditions in Seattle. It quickly grew across the state of Washington, and for more than 10 years, Northwest Harvest has had a 23,000 square foot distribution center here in Yakima. Every single summer and during harvest season, it gets packed to the very roof. It's just not big enough. In harvest season, we have often had to turn away really wonderful fruits and vegetables. And in fact, in the state of Washington, there wasn't enough cold storage to meet the growing demand for food insecure people. This new distribution center that will serve all of Washington will have the capacity to be able to say yes every time farmers and growers have offerings for us that we can distribute to people who experience hunger. There is going to be a tremendous amount of cold storage here thousands of pallet positions. There's going to be temperature controlled environments. There'll be ambient for our canned foods that we can distribute in emergencies. We will be able to distribute four times as much food. It will be fresher, it will be healthier. This is really a gain in size. It's also a gain in quality. It means better food for more people all across Washington. I'm really excited about the free grocery store here for the people of Yakima Valley. We've started this concept in Seattle and it's been so popular. You can go in, you shop fruits and vegetables, dairy items, meats, everything you need to feed a family. The only difference between this and a regular grocery store is you don't pay when you check out. In 2018, we said hunger is way too high here in Washington state. Let's cut it in half in the next 10 years and then let's cut it in half again 10 years after that. In 2018, one in eight people in Washington were experiencing food insecurity. We want that to be one in 16 by 2028. It's already gone down. That's the exciting part. We're at about one in 10 now. By making investments now, we are putting together the system that can actually confront the reasons why we have hunger and we can see those numbers go down. That's a tremendous change. It's a change that's never been realized in decades of hunger response. And this new distribution center is a keystone for making that a reality. This project is going to result in less people experiencing hunger all across the state of Washington, but it's going to take all of us. Maybe you have time to volunteer and to contribute your expertise to the work that we're doing. Maybe you're in a position to contribute financial resources to this project. We need it, we need you. This is a transformational moment and if we can join together for this transformation, we're going to make a big difference for the people of Washington State. Join us today. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Thomas Reynolds, and uh, I'm really sorry I couldn't be with you in person today. I was uh, in Yakima on Monday and Tuesday, 
And uh, Sonny said, don't worry, we've, we've had uh, Zoom participants recently. The last one was from Norway. And I thought, oh no, I have to live up to, you know, the, ex the excuse of uh, traveling across the Atlantic versus traveling across the mountains. Uh, but I, I've got to pick up my kids uh, in, in an hour and a half or so. So I didn't have enough time to get back. But it's really nice to be with you. And Jana, I really appreciate the way you picked off the meeting today, just reflecting on the fact that there are a lot of hungry people in Washington state. And that's true in, in the Yakima Valley as well. And uh, it was really nice to see uh, Sonia and um, you know just your sharing, you know, the, the idea of the importance of fiddlehead ferns uh, and the idea that um, you know, there are important traditions that um, can lead to prosperous growing and harvest seasons. Uh, just deeply appreciate all of that. And by the way, uh, John, I personally love kimchi. So if you ever get any extra, you can, you can share that with me. You know, Northwest Harvest has had a very long, deep and valuable relationship with Rotary in Yakima and across the state of Washington. In fact, the Rotary program Harvest Against Hunger is probably, if you look at the period of years that we have been in partnership, has contributed the most fruits and vegetables to Northwest Harvest of any single entity. So we are deeply grateful for that Rotary program. And we're also grateful for uh, the volunteerism of Rotarians across the state and right in Yakima. Um, we, and we have a very um, meaningful relationship with the Yakima Rotary Food Bank. Um, we're so grateful for the work that uh, that food bank does in the Yakima community and for the other 55 or so partners that we work with around the Yakima Valley. I really feel like when we work together, um, contributing each of the things that we do well, that's what's difference making. You know, I thought I'd tell you just briefly a little bit about uh, me and why I uh, decided to, to be the CEO of Northwest Harvest. I grew up in Washington State. I grew up in Tacoma, actually. And then I spent a number of years outside the country. I lived in Asia and the Middle East and Eastern Europe. And, uh, and then I, I moved to the East Coast of the United States and I was uh, running um, an international nonprofit organization and covering 95 countries. And my mom, she called me and she said, Thomas, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm going to die soon. I want you to move home. And I said, well, mom, you're not that old and you're not going to die soon, but I have been thinking about coming home. It's been about six years since I had spent three weeks in a row in any one time zone. And I was ready to reduce my carbon footprint and give back to my home state. So in 2017, I moved back to Washington State to become the CEO of Northwest Harvest. And I really found myself drawn to Northwest Harvest for three reasons. One was just about everyone I talked to, volunteers, board members, staff members, everyone was so focused on respect and dignity for each person who was experiencing hunger across Washington State. There wasn't any sense that people should feel ashamed of being hungry. It was more about what can we do in our own individual way to help. The second reason I was drawn to Northwest Harvest is it's grassroots funded. You know, it's not uh, the, the, the budget of Northwest Harvest is not controlled by big donors or by uh, government funding. In fact, no one contributor contributes more than 1% of our uh, annual cash budget per year. We do have tremendous contributions from uh, farmers and growers around the state. And in, in fact, the Yakima Valley uh, is the most generous geographic region to Northwest Harvest of anywhere in Washington State or even beyond because we get donations outside of Washington State. Too. Then the third reason I was drawn to Northwest Harvest was um, just, just the level of strategy that went into what we do. Most of what we distribute are fresh fruits and vegetables. And having lived and worked in 95 countries, um, I can tell you with some authority that uh, SpaghettiOs aren't, don't really have a global presence, but carrots, onions, cabbage, potatoes, things like that, you can find those present in most households in most countries around the world. And that's what Northwest Harvest distributes. And so there's this instant um, and widespread relevance to the work. And so I joined the organization in 2017. One of the things that, uh, that 
the leadership team uh, noticed and I noticed was that uh, increasingly with the traffic in Kent and the generosity of the people of central Washington, we were taking a lot of fresh produce from uh, central Washington, uh, predominantly Yakima Valley, putting it on trucks, moving it to Kent, processing it. And then in many cases, we were moving it back to central and eastern Washington. It was quite time inefficient. Uh, not only was it time and, and uh, inefficient and, and more expensive to do it that way, uh, some of the food banks that we would distribute, for instance, mushrooms to, would, um, would gently uh, and somewhat affectionately describe the mushrooms more like mushroom soup and the raspberries more like raspberry jam. So we really wanted to do something different. And that's why we began to look at upgrading our distribution center. We looked all across uh, Washington state. Uh, we actually looked at all the different corners of Washington and settled on uh, that location that I think many of you probably know of by now because you've driven by it um, on Fruitvale, the old uh, drive-in movie theater right next to the DSHS building and, and right next to Top Notch Motors. And you know those 10 and a half acres looked ideal. Um, Yakima is great in terms of its connections uh, via highway, um, its adjacency to some of the most pristine farmland uh, land in all of the United States. Um, and because there's this, there's this core of volunteers and farmers and people who have been powering Northwest Harvest and our work to distribute food across the state. And so we made that acquisition of the land um, Within the last 18 months, we um, began to build uh, the distribution center and that free grocery store. Northwest Harvest is a big believer in focusing on local. And so all of the people who are involved in standing up the distribution center, like the amazing Sunny Cameron and like the extraordinary uh, construction group TriPly, we were very much focused on making sure that our vendors and the people who help us stand up our work are right here in the Yakima Valley. And that's been, a, a, I think, a really good decision. Uh, you know, try applying Sunny and, and you know, working with um, the mayor's office and the city manager and, and the city council and county council. Everyone we've worked with has been so helpful and so proactive. I think that is only accomplished by having people who know each other and are passionate about the project itself. Um, you know, we, we were so focused on local that uh, even with our launch event that I think Sunny mentioned uh, uh, that we had a couple weeks ago, um, my one of my favorite restaurants in Yakima Crafted um, was the caterer for that event. So I think it's just really important uh, as we think about standing up this asset that I think will help all of the people of Washington State. And it's also really benefiting people of Yakima. So what, um, I think I've told you a little bit about why I have a distribution center in Yakima. Let me tell you a little bit about our free grocery store. And um, it was mentioned in that video that uh, Sunny showed for you. Free grocery stores uh, we found in Seattle are incredibly valuable. Um, people experience, when they experience hunger, oftentimes there's low income issues. There might be health care issues. There might be caring for uh, young ones are caring for elders. It's a mix of factors that create that condition for people to feel food insecure or feel hunger. And so by having something like a free grocery store where you can go in, you can shop, you can shop at the pace you want to. Some people go in and shop around very quickly, find just the, the several things that they need for that day, and then they uh, head home. Or you can, you can make it uh, a whole experience. You can go for a while, you can you can visit with people, you can visit with volunteers and the people you've gotten to know, and it might be a really community experience. But to be able to go and pick out exactly what you want and need um, that uh, is uh, you know, relevant to um, what you are used to eating, we have found that to be very valuable. Um, a couple of people have asked me over the course of time as, as they begin to learn about the free grocery store, They've said, well, is that actually competing with grocery stores in the Yakima area? Um, and and I, would, I would say no. And I even uh, have met with a number of um, owners of grocery stores in the Yakima area. I, I asked, I suggested we could just trade coupons. You know, we could just do some cross-promoting. 
Um, but once I explained that, you know, a Northwest Harvest free grocery store is going to have a lot of great food. But if you, uh, if you need to cook something specific that day, it's probably not going to have all the ingredients you need. Because what we get in, the, in our grocery store is donated from people who are um, giving of their excess. And so if, if you're trying to make an angel food cake for a birthday party that night, you're probably going to want to go to the grocery store. You may not be able to find everything at, uh, at the Fruitdale Community Market, uh, which is what we're naming the new food grocery store. But that will have, I think that program will have tremendous meaning. Um, I think it complements all the wonderful food banks that are already in Yakima. I think the fact that it's so close to DSHS, um, we'll make sure that the store hours are open when there are group meetings and the types of things that uh, people go to for services at DSHS. They'll just be able to walk across the block and um, shop at the free grocery store as well. So we are feeling really good about um, this, this new investment that we're standing up in Yakima. Um, we have tremendous staff already in Yakima. Um, Mike Doonan is the Yakima Warehouse current manager. I think most of the food banks and uh, organizations that um, distribute Northwest Harvest food across the whole valley know Leo, who's one of our main uh, warehouse guys who coordinates and uh, makes sure that great food is going all over uh, the Yakima Valley. And um, we will be significantly ramping up our staff. So we'll also be hiring about 40 new people um, for our new distribution center and for the food grocery store. So if you know people who are looking for jobs um, or if you're in a position to help us advertise, we're going to start hiring for those positions in um, October, November, and then we'll do another round of hiring next spring. Um, so really excited about that. Um, you know, what, what is the result of doing things like this? Well, I, I think I mentioned it in that video that you saw, but this is going to increase by a factor of four the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables that will be available to food banks around the state of Washington to give to people who are experiencing hunger. And so that's going to be a tremendous benefit in addition to the entire state of Washington. Um, also, the Food Policy Forum, which is a bipartisan or even multipartisan uh, group that uh, meets to talk about uh, food issues and agricultural issues across Washington State, has for years identified a lack of cold storage. And by having 60,000 square feet of frozen space and, and about 100,000 square feet of chill space, uh, Northwest Harvest is going to be meeting that gap, not only for the emergency food system, but we will also be making um, that space and our transportation available for growers and producers in the Yakima Valley and in Central Washington as well. So we want to be good neighbors. We want to contribute things that are valuable and meaningful uh, for people who experience hunger right in the Fruitvale neighborhood, for growers and producers around the Yakima Valley and in Central Washington, and for the people who experience hunger all across Washington State. Maybe I'll just close by saying, you know, I think when we think of ourselves as being one, and being uh, all being neighbors in a community, that makes a big difference. I sort of, I sort of feel uncomfortable or even reject this idea that there are the haves and the have-nots. I think all of us have areas of abundance, and all of us have areas of deficit. And the way society, I want it to function, is when we are able to share those areas of abundance with people who have the same area, but it's an area of deficit, and vice versa. I really feel like the people who shop at our grocery stores and take home our great food, they have other areas of abundance that they can share with um, the rest of us in Washington State. Yeah, you know, sometimes I, I think about uh, the people who uh, make financial contributions to Northwest Harvest, and um, maybe that's an area of abundance, but maybe there's uh, in an area of deficit that's in the areas of resilience or overcoming um, stressful financial challenges. Maybe if we think about it, each of us will have moments where we can receive gifts from others and we can share gifts from others. And I think that makes us as a society um, strong, high functioning, and the type of society that I want to contribute to and I want to live in. Thanks so much. Um, thank you for all of you who give to Northwest Harvest, who donate your time to Northwest Harvest, who give us great advice 
and who um, apply your skills and trade to the work that we do. It, I am incredibly grateful. And again, I'm sorry I wasn't able to be with you in person, but I look forward to being with you again soon. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure any of you have questions. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Reynolds would be happy to enter entertain those. Uh, if not, we appreciate it very much. Uh, really pleased to have you, and we all have been wondering about that building because it's certainly a big edifice uh, in uh, down on Fruitvale. So, thank you very much. We'll be giving a book to uh, one of the um, um, uh, uh, one of the uh, 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 <laughs> I'm kind of stumbling, but one of the. Um, uh, 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 the uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 book. Yeah, nah, what can I tell you? But uh, to one of the um, um, uh, area area libraries, community centers. Yes, thank you very much. Um, anyway, um, Rotary Marble Draw. Uh, let's see, Jason. Let's see, draw one of the uh, tickets. The amount in the topic is 1940, but you still need to draw a. You still need to draw a. A ticket, a ticket. No, no, that's all right. He's fine. Right, and the number is zero seven five zero seven zero two, zero seven five seven zero two. Do we have a winner? Zero seven five seven zero two. All right, Jason, you get to draw another one. Zero seven five seven nine two. Ah, there you go. Okay, now what we did here is I think I made a mess, but not totally because I think whoever did these dumped a whole lot of them in the wrong bucket. So we're going to do this. So you get the fish in there for the, and what color does he get? Pick the marble, not the ticket. You have a white marble. We have a winner. Uh, you have a winner. So you just won a chunk of money. Right. Half of what of this. And Carolyn's over there. Going to be seeing you very shortly. So anyway, thank you very much. So we'll start over again next week. Uh, speaking of which, next week we will be back here. I'm making a mess, am I not? Um, somehow or another, these last few days have not been my finest hour. Uh, is the uh, academic scholarships next uh, next week, which will also be here at the convention center, and then the following week will be our special program to do with uh, returning from Vietnam. And I think, Carolyn, have you put out the tickets for people to actually um, sponsor a veteran? Or a, okay, you'll be here seeing that coming out shortly because we'd like to honor Gold Star members and any veteran who's coming and we're hoping to do that without uh, charging them basically for lunch. So we're hoping each of us, you will take a, a, um, uh, one of those veterans or Gold Star members as a guest. So with that, we are thankfully, so I won't do any other stupid things, uh, <laughs> and including the people who are standing up in the back, we're just gonna hold it and we are <laughs> Adjourn. <laughs> Talk about throwing things on the floor. <clears throat> Don't give me a lot of things all at once. <laughs>
about the klutz of the Western world. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs>